Hey guys, and thank you so much for joining me for On the Couch with Fouch. Today we are at, where are we today? We're in Niagara Falls. <laughs> That's right. We're in Niagara Falls at the Scotiabank Convention Center. We've had a great evening of music. See a Legacy 5, Collingsworth Family, Greater Vision, Aaron Wilburn, The Torchman. And Freedom. Freedom Singers. Yeah. And I think that was it. That was it for tonight. But we had a fantastic, and there goes Scott Howard. Thank you, brother Scott Howard. Yes. Hey, Amen, Amen, boys. <laughs> Anyways, back to the interview here tonight with Phil Collingsworth Sr. Thank you so much for joining me. I love it because this is on the couch with Fouch, and we have no couch. We're on chairs. I love it. It's a very, very sad night with no couch. But you know what? As you guys have seen before, we've done it before without the couch, and it usually ends up okay. So the chairs are nice. They're comfortable. Kind of snazzy. We'll be okay. All right. I we'll think we can make it. <laughs> so, Phil, a lot of people who submitted questions was just simply asking the different questions about how your family got started in music, yep. you know, and I'm, I'm sure you've gotten that question a whole lot, <laughs> yeah. but just give a short, you know, a short version of how you guys got started with, with the family group. The interesting everything. part is we actually, Kim and I started singing together as a duet before we were even married. We were engaged to get married and about six weeks prior to the marriage, uh, my father-in-law was speaking at a church camp and the people that were doing the, the special music had a death in their family. It, just suddenly, in the, right during the church camp. And wow. they had no idea what to do for music. And they came to my father-in-law and said, do you have any suggestions for us? We're losing our musicians. And he said, well, my daughter is engaged and her, her, hus her husband-to-be are planning to be singers. Wow. And they said, well, bring them up. Let's try them out. We didn't have one single song to sing. And so he called us and we said, okay, we brought a chaperone with us because we weren't married. We headed to Michigan and we had to rehearse every day so we'd have a song to sing for the service that night. Wow. Very that's, cool. That's how it got started. So there you go. That's yeah. how it originally got started. Yep. In and the state of just, Michigan. Then just as time progressed, you just added a few children here and there. <laughs> Had it added a few instruments here and you there. You know, the best way to get your own singing group is just to grow them. <laughs> right. You know, I would be tough out of luck because Candace and I just have one one child. So you Sounds don't, like need, a trio, a, you don't need a bass singer in a trio. So, you know, anyways. Um, so uh, a lot of people was asking about that. Yeah. But I was wondering about when you got saved. Six years old on a Wednesday night. I remember it well. Our church was old. We did not have any air conditioning, so the windows were still up because it was hot. It was like what they called Indian summer that would happen in late September. And I remember our preacher that Wednesday night. It was supposed to be a prayer service, but he preached a little message on the Lord's second coming and whether or not you were ready. And for the first time, I remember very well thinking that night, I've done some pretty bad things and I'm not ready if the Lord comes tonight. <laughs> Right. And so I headed for the altar that night and gave my heart to the Lord. Very cool. Remember it well. And your favorite Bible verse? Mm, boy, there's a lot of Matthew six thirty three. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven mm. and all his righteousness, and these things shall be added unto you. Very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of that family history there and his salvation experience and his favorite verse. And um, another thing that a lot of people asked about was in one way or another, was asking about your trumpet playing. Yeah. So, why the trumpet? It, it, it's very simple. When I was a kid going to church, our um, song leader is what we called him, played the trumpet. And he would start the congregation singing. He would say, we're going to sing number so-and-so in the book, you know, and everybody would turn to the book and they'd play the introduction and he'd take off. As Soon as he had the crowd singing, he'd pick up his trumpet and he would play. And he would direct with his trumpet. Interesting. As a, as a five, six-year-old kid, I just thought it was the coolest thing on the planet. So I just, yeah. I just had to play like him. Very and unique. interesting, we were at a convention two weeks ago, and he was there. Was he directing still? With no, the he wasn't doing directing oh, the trumpet. Okay. But he was there, and I hadn't seen him probably in 10, 15 years. And wow. he's, you know, he's in the 70s now. But it was so cool to see him again, because that is the reason I, I yeah. wanted to play the trumpet. And so I joined the band in the church uh, probably when I was in probably fifth grade, fifth, sixth grade. I started trumpet lessons and started playing in the band at church. Very cool. There you go. Yeah. That's why he plays the trumpet. <laughs> so one question regarding the trumpet. Uh, my father-in-law, Steve Harney, thanks for the question, Steve. He <laughs> wants to know, what is the highest note you can play on the oh, trumpet? Oh, oh, oh. Well, in an arrangement, the highest I will ever usually put is the E above high C. 
that's typically the F is a little harder to squeak out. So the E above high C in an arrangement. Now, if I'm just messing around, I can go a little bit higher, but an E is the highest I will do in public. So tonight when mm -hmm. you and Kim did the yeah. piano and trumpet, trumpet duet, yeah. what was that one? Oh, that was did? just a B flat on the, uh, okay. so that wasn't terribly high. Okay. It I mean, your, fa your face was pretty, <laughs> pretty red when you was going for that one. So I can only imagine what it is on that. On the E. <laughs> It's called, what, the only way to get it is you have to tighten your diaphragm like it is rock hard and wow. then tighten the lips that much too. And it's the pressure from the diaphragm plus the pressure of the lips that pops those. Big so is, would that be your best tip for anybody watching the interview that would be a trumpet player? Is that the best tip you would have for them? Oh, the best tip you have is if you're a trumpet player, lay flat on the floor and play point straight up. And what that does, when you lay flat on the floor, you physically cannot breathe from your upper lungs. You automatically have to breathe from your diaphragm. And that's how you learn to breathe playing the trumpet. I'm going to try that. Yep, but here we go. I don't, I don't have a trumpet, but I'm going to... Straight on the floor, lay flat on your back. Okay. Now, when you breathe, you automatically breathe from your diaphragm. Yeah, yeah you can't. Yeah, you can't do it. <laughs> now, can you imagine having a trumpet yeah, laid yeah. against there? Interesting. Interesting. I've never known that before. And the other thing you can do when you're playing a trumpet in that position is take a furry toboggan and stick it down into the trumpet. And what that does, that forces you to create a big fat round tone because you're trying to force against that toboggan. Then you pop the toboggan out and you've got this big, nice round tone. Wow. Hey, I learned a lot just in the last 30 seconds. That was great information. Thanks so much for sharing yeah. that. And hey, if you want to get at home, you're watching, if you want to lay down on the floor and try that, that's yep. unique. I had, did not know that. Now, there is always a problem playing the trumpet that way because the spit goes with gravity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so what it's always you, a problem. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so your family is known for intricate and really good harmonies in your singing. And so, why don't you just talk about that a little bit? I mean, what? Well, we love harmony, and we have our own stereo effect because we're basically a, trip, a double trio. How we do it is we sing the identical same parts, three of us, and then the other three double right on top of it. So it sounds like a stereo trio, except since we have six voices, we hear all these other chords, so we can put a sixth in or a seventh in or a fourth, you know, to make the chord thick. And so we have the ability to do that. And that's one, some of the time why our, our, our uh, harmony chord structures sound thick, because we'll put those extra notes in since we have six, gotcha. six voices. So Paul Sharp wants to know, you're talking about that, Paul Sharp wants to know if you have been thinking of adding a bass singer anytime soon <laughs> to really complete that nice sound. Well, there's nobody in the family that can sing bass. <laughs> is Paul, is Paul uh, planning on making an application? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, probably not. Just here's the reason why. I personally don't care for bass level of, of singing with female voices. Yeah. I love it with all male voices but I don't like it with female voices because the bass singer and the soprano are almost two octaves apart and you get that real wide open type of harmony. Right. It's part of the reason why Carol Cimbala has no bass singers in the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. Hmm. They only have three parts, period. Yeah. She has no bass part at all. So all the males sing the tenor line or the lead. Well, I've, I've actually noticed that be before because when I've actually been listening to their stuff, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no way I can <laughs> sing with those guys. Right? I'm like, ah! <laughs> singing right there. And she does that simply because she doesn't like the sound of the bass line with female voices. Interesting. Yeah, and I'm the same way. I don't right. like, you know, I love bass singing with male voices. When right. you got, you have to have a bass with male voices, I think. Um, sorry, Booth Brothers and Greater Vision. But anyways. All you, you male you, trios <laughs> out there, second rate. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love that you know, uh, bass sound with male voices. Right. I just don't like it mixed with female voices right. because we're more than not good part. So kind of back to the intricate harmonies. Um, Eric Eldridge would like to know how long does it take to perfect some of those harmonies that you guys do? Well, you never really get them fully perfected because we're human. <laughs> right. And we sing a cappella as much as we can. We sing a cappella every night unless we've got a vocal problem you know, in somebody's voice. Uh, and it does take a while. Thankfully, everybody can hear the chords and everybody can hear intervals. Um, so a lot of the times we'll just teach it line by line by line based on intervals, major, third, minor, third, whatever kind of thing. 
So uh, sometimes they take a little long, especially the Christmas project. We had some very intricate harmonies in those Christmas projects. And so it took a little while, but we try to always have it ready before we go to the studio because the studio is too expensive to learn it there. Yeah, yeah no <laughs> doubt. That's, that's true. And Legacy 5 does that as well. Right, exactly. We rehearse all the new stuff before we go before to Before you get the that studio. studio. Yeah. And then stuff changes a little bit it after does. you get there. But, but yeah, I mean, if you just go in blind, basically, yeah. it'll take you forever and cost well, a fortune. Dolly Parton, when she goes to her records, and this is very interesting, she would not even you know, rehearse anything beforehand, so she would just get the studio for three months. So wow. she could just do it all right there. And she ate a bag of light potato chips every day. Because it helps. And that's place. what all that money y'all spend when you go to Dollywood <laughs> is going for. Three yeah. months of studio time. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, Ronnie Fields, just real quick, wants one great tip for a group that's looking to go full time. Wow. Hit your knees and pray, pray, pray until you don't have any pants left on your knees because it's going to take a lot of the divine. Right. In the atmosphere we're in, in the evangelical church world today, in a music ministry, if you don't have the mixture of musical excellence in the performance plus the interjection of the divine, it right. won't flow. Right. It, and here's the reason why. People have to be so touched when they leave that they want to take a product home with them. Not because they love the music that's on the product, but because they want to take the product home to duplicate the feeling they had in the live concert. Right. Right. And that's the reason they come to the table. Gotcha. There you are. <laughs> that was for Ronnie Fields. Thank you for your question. Uh, the next few questions here are just kind of quick hitters. So uh, Nika Curtis would like to know, what's your favorite dish that Kim cooks? Ooh, apple dumplings. She has the best in the world. Okay. Uh, Jean Robinson wants to know, how long is Kim's hair? <laughs> it's not terribly long, but it's be between her shoulder blades and her waist, just kind of about halfway back okay. on her back. There you go. Yep. That was a, a, a very unique question. Yeah. I would have never thought someone would ask that. Yep. Well, we've had a lot of people question. say to her, oh, please wear your hair down to a concert. But <laughs> she's just never done it, so she doesn't feel comfortable. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, William Blair would like to know, which of your son-in-laws is your favorite and why? I am not stepping into that. Oh, come on. <laughs> Come on. I have to live with both of them on the bus. <laughs> you could have just said, whichever one is the last one. Oh, yeah. You've got one daughter left. Yeah. So the, whichever one's the last one would be my favorite. Oh. See, because you just don't know who that's yeah. going to be. But it could be the worst one on the planet. It could be, <laughs> but at least you're safe because neither one of them. But she's already promised now. me and not until 35, so we're okay. okay. Well, she's actually here watching this. <laughs> so if we go right over here. Olivia, what do you think about the 35 uh, waiting? No. <laughs> well, we have her word on the subject right there. <laughs> For a second, I thought we were going to get a no comment. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Michael Metz, folks. Oh, there. Kate's husband, Michael, is... See, this is what happens when we're doing on the couch. You better Everyone answer else. I'm your favorite Every, song. Oh, uh, <laughs> we just did that question. <laughs> we just did that question. <laughs> you'll, have, answer it. you'll have to wait and watch to see what he says. <laughs> you know, <laughs> while we're having fun, everyone else is working. And there's Courtney. We're the only workers in this family. So. Oh, you heard what oh, you said. Man, you never know what's going to happen on well, the couch. With I can tell I you, Philip and William are in there tearing the piano down. And yeah. that piano weighs 300 times what that is. Talk does. about the piano real fast. Some yeah. people may not know. Well, we take our own C7 Yamaha with us. That's a 7'6 Yamaha concert grand piano. 1,200 pounds goes with us everywhere we go. Because the way Mama plays the piano, I would be in a liability situation if I let her play other people's pianos. <laughs> Called broken strings and right. lose some keys. Right. You'd have to just start a fund to yeah. put money in it every week. Just, okay, this is going to be the yeah. broken piano fund. Broken piano fund. Uh, okay, so the next question is from Nancy Revis. Okay. And she would like to know, how do you keep the grandchild so happy? Boy, it's nothing that Papa does, let me tell you. She just, I don't, I, all I gotta say is, we are so blessed because she is a naturally, incredibly happy child. Yeah. She's just happy, happy, happy. And I mean, she's just an unusual child and we're grateful that the first one wasn't a demon on wheels. Because <laughs> that would have made life on That'd the bus. Ooh, Hurricane City. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for 
Yeah, exactly. The Fouch zone. Okay, so tonight, okay. first time ever, I'm switching up the Fouch zone a little bit here. And what we're gonna gonna do, Ooh. instead of you Does this have anything to do with David Letterman shutting down business? No, 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 no. Okay. That, hey, I want his job. Oh, you do? I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm, I love my job. I don't oh, need yeah. his job. Yeah. Um, what we're gonna do tonight on the Fouch zone is mm -hmm. instead of asking you questions and you answering them, I'm going to give you a word or a phrase. The first thing that comes to your to your mind, word association, um, is what is going to be on recorded for all history hey, to yes see. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. So I'm going to say the word. The first thing that comes to your mind, you're going to spit it out. All right. All right. Pandas. Time. Express. <laughs> Baked beans. Time. Uh, Newfoundland. Boat. David Letterman. <laughs> New York. <laughs> And the last one, Crybaby. Oh, CDs. Okay. So I'm going to try that. Pandas, you said Express. Express. Panda Express. Panda Express, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, baked beans, you said. Sugar. Brown sugar. Brown sugar. sugar. Yeah. Newfoundland, you said boats. Boats. It takes a boat to get out there. You can't. Okay, interesting. David Letterman, you laughed. You know, I said New York finally. New York. Yeah. And Crybaby, you said. CDs. CDs. Yeah. You know Crybaby? The, the web the website yeah it, it, they're they if somebody releases a brand new CD out there then it's a it was a big thing to help you market them it was called crybaby we didn't know about that I've heard of <laughs> CD baby yeah, yeah. I think I've never called, heard of crybaby well my, you know why y'all ever heard of crybaby it, it's probably CD baby and I just no. thought it was crybaby you're too young <laughs> I thought you would have thought of your grandchild oh I should have. But after you she said, doesn't cry but I was going to say, after you said that she was she so cries good. She almost never, just yeah. rarely. No one's ever heard of the uh, CD platform online of Crybaby, but. Um, it probably doesn't exist. Well, I'm going to Google it, and we're going to find out. Actually, Ben Wolf does the videos, he does the editing. Ben, why don't you Google that and put it in the video if it exists or not? That would be awesome. Because it could be that I have told a fibber McGee and Molly and didn't realize I did. But it was the first thing that came to his mind. It was. And that's what we were looking for. <laughs> so, thank you so much, Phil, for joining me for Welcome, the interview. Welcome, man. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching On the Couch with Fouch. You guys are the reason why I continue to do this. Your questions are great. So if you guys would just follow along on social media, Facebook, Twitter. Hey, we're even doing Periscope now. So check it What's out, that? guys. Periscope is a new app that Twitter has put out where you do live broadcast that people watch live on their phones. Cool. Did it tonight while y'all were singing. Cool, I'm gonna get it. I don't yeah, there it. was all of like seven people watching. Oh wow. It was great. I could crash the server anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much guys. Check us out, mattfouch.com and on social media. And check out the Collingsworth family at thecollinsworthfamily.com. Thank you, Phil. Thank you guys.